ஓம் ஸ்ரீ கணேஷாய நமஹா ஓம் ஸ்ரீ குருப்யோ நமஹா டென்ஷன் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் ஸ்ட்ரெயின் சம் ஹவ் திஸ் சீம்ஸ் டு பி தி ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் த டே அண்ட் ஐ எம் கெட்டிங் டு ஹியர் அ லாட் ஆஃப் யங்ஸ்டர்ஸ் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு காலேஜ் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் இன் ஸ்கூல் ஈவன் தோஸ் ஆர் ஒர்க்கிங் யூ நோ ஆல் ஏஜ் குரூப்ஸ் அக்ராஸ் ஏஜ் குரூப்ஸ் ஆர் ஹியர் பீப்புள் கம்ப்ளைனிங் தட் தி ஆர் இன் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் earlier there used to be times when you know people who would cross 35 40 would you know call and say i am in a lot of stress i have financial burden i have family responsibilities i don't know how to cope up with it and uh, you know could you look into my chart and things like that but today there has been such a change so drastic that school children also complain to their parents that they are in a lot of stress whether it's about exams or competitive uh environment or is it like uh, uh, there's so much pressure from the family for them to study uh, and all this is resulting in a lot of mental uh, stress and depression now this is another word uh, which has become more like a lingo i can say because i hear a lot of youngsters uh, saying uh, you know i'm so depressed and when they hear something which they're not happy listening to or if they feel it's very um unpleasant or something which is not appealing to them they'll say oh it's so depressing so depression is another word or depressing is another word which they commonly use in their normal parlance because they just feel uh, i don't know if they feel it's cool to use that or whether they're really going through a lot of it and when when it gets too often the parents call me and say oh my son is depressed my daughter is depressed and uh she has locked herself in the room she doesn't want to talk to anybody he doesn't want to uh, study you know these kind of complaints i get to hear a lot i also hear that there are qualified students who have got excellent marks in exams they are highly highly qualified in terms of degrees and post graduations and then they realize that their goal of life is not to become an engineer or a chartered accountant or whatever they have chosen to be and then they just decide to do nothing so they are like uh, at home uh, and whiling away the time and uh, parents feel maybe my son is depressed maybe my daughter is depressed that she doesn't want to do anything but what's the point she's like uh, really got very good marks she scored so well and uh, she's been brilliant in academics but she's not putting it to use so i hear varied kind of uh, mental frames of mind which is all boiling down to parents concluding that their child is in depression okay whether it's about career choices or whether it's about uh, losing somebody very dear i hear that also like you know when uh, when people of any age group even 50 plus people when they lose their parents who are 80s and 90s because of the long bonding and uh, emotional connectivity they are in a state of depression and they are not able to come out of it we understand that you know when you lose somebody dear you are likely to get into sadness and then if sadness nurtured over a long period of time can actually amount to some amount of depression okay so this is another kind of uh, category of uh, depression that i hear some people are just like you know going through their menopause or some hormonal changes and they are going through havoc their state of mind is totally gone for a toss and they just don't know how to handle it again it is resulting in a lot of depression and mood swings and you know we all see that youngsters today have a lot of mood swings and lot of uh, rash rude behavior and uh, erratic and unpredictable kind of a behavior and they want to take sudden decisions they want to be independent they want to do a lot of things uh, by themselves they don't want the parents to influence them in any way whatsoever uh, or interfere i mean they would consider influence as interference so this is another thing that i hear but uh, all said and done everything boils down to the mind and in astrology it is the moon which governs the mind now um certain things that i would look at in a chart whenever i hear these kind of complaints is that uh is the moon afflicted is the moon afflicted with a planet such as mars because mars can really make somebody very aggressive especially when mars and moon are connected uh, although it's called chandra mangal yoga there is a chandra mangal yoga uh, it also has many other side effects if moon is also positioned on mars nakshatra star of mars 
then again uh, the native or the person whose chart i'm analyzing so he or she is likely to be very very aggressive very temperamental short tempered sometimes very harsh in speech uh, very unpleasant to hear and uh, you know such people are considered very arrogant and obviously the surroundings are going to be affected because the family is the first one who's going to be affected then the friend circle so all all these kind of uh, planetary positions have a very deep influence on the state of mind of an individual now if for example moon is debilitated uh what really happens when the moon is debilitated is again they cannot take right decisions and uh, they get dejected very fast and depressed at the drop of a hat like this like you know if something doesn't happen their way they, that's it that they are very very sad they just shut themselves off from the rest of the world and uh, everything that you tell people tend to misunderstand you know these are the traits of people with a very weak moon so what really happens is like you know you would say something in a very good sense in the sense of uh, you know well being for the other person but it's always taken the other way because the, their moon will be afflicted so whoever has a very weak moon this is exactly what happens and another uh, havoc that moon creates when he's influenced is with the influence of rahu so what really happens is when rahu and moon are positioned together when there's a conjunction in the chart uh such people are always suspicious always suspicious uh you see you will be surprised to know uh, that you know when couples call me for a consultation uh, the kind of questions they ask like for example they would say like do you think my wife has an extramarital affair do you think my husband has an extramarital affair do you think my boyfriend would have an extramarital affair after marriage if we decide to be together now what are all these traits these are all traits of chandra and rahu being together or your fifth house lord panchamadhipati we say in uh, astrology so if the panchamadhipati is influenced by rahu or if moon or chandra is influenced by rahu then these kind of suspicious activities keep running in the mind and they nurture uh, these suspicious ideas and their imagination will um, you know really create havoc in their own minds so they lack a lot of peace uh, for themselves and then because they are negatively influenced by these planets they also tend to kind of create havoc in the life of the people whom they are associated with so this is pretty much the trend of uh, you know if i go on listing the kind of influences uh, moon has on the mind even if moon is influenced by ketu the nirasha bhava is very intense very intense so the thing is they'll have everything in life and they'll still feel they don't have enough they still feel they don't have what they deserve and that can be a cause for depression so these are all the common traits uh, that you should watch out for and if you feel that you or your family members or your friends or anybody has these traits probably it's time to uh, get a consultation and see why this is happening and what needs to be done to rectify this this is one thing another thing that happened which i want to share because uh, i mean not everything is related to planets maybe it's some times also how you deal with your family uh, so what happened recently was uh, there was a college going student and for, uh, she finished her uh, she completed her schooling and she joined her pre university so when she joined a pre university about one month or so she attended her college after which she was not interested so suddenly she would complain uh, to her parents and say i have a headache i have a stomach ache i have this i have that so the parents actually uh, you know performed the normal drill of taking her to the doctor it went to the extent of Uh, like you know first they would go to a general physician and then the general physician would say everything seems fine maybe you should take her to an eye specialist then they go to the eye specialist and then the eye specialist say no no she doesn't have power uh, problems and anything like that her eyesight is perfectly fine so it is something to do with brain and then they again go to the doctor and then uh, this time uh, maybe a neurologist and then he he recommends an mri Uh, hesitantly actually because he also sees that there is no basic problem or anything as such but and nevertheless uh, you know you want to rule out all other uh, possibilities of anything to do with brain so um, you know he recommended a, an mri and she got an mri done um and everything seemed fine so now the parents are really concerned so they don't know what's happening so they thought maybe uh, um 
what really happened did somebody uh, say something unsavory or uh, you know did anything unpleasant happen in college they went back to college they spoke everybody said no there was nothing like that nothing uh, untoward happened and uh, she seemed fine only so then they uh, then they when they consulted uh, me for astrology consultation i had a look at the chart and i realized that a couple of things had happened so one one of it was that uh, she had walked on uh, on a on something where you know they remove the drishti and then they put it on the road like lemon and chilies usually people have the habit where they take out the nazar and they actually dispose it on a three road junction and she happened to walk on that so when such things happen the drishti dosha happens so like she caught on to the drishti second thing was that that had to be cleared okay that was one thing second thing was that um, also once the drishti was cleared she started saying okay maybe i'll go tomorrow i'll go day after she started procrastinating all this while she was not even interested then the parents had a conversation with her to ask her why is this happening so i tell us exactly what is wrong and that's when she opened out and she said that she was never interested in the stream of subject that uh, was chosen so she wanted to be something else she wanted to study something else and she ended up with this because of parental pressure and then uh, the parents kind of counseled her and then you know i also looked at the chart to see what can be done to strengthen her mind uh, to Im- increase her uh, ichha gnana and kriya shakti we say in sanskrit so ichha shakti is the power of will gnana shakti is power of knowledge comprehension and kriya shakti is the power of action these three are very very important for anybody to come out of depression get out of stress uh, to be able to face the world and when we look at that there are various aspects in the chart like we see for the efforts that you put it's the tritiya adipati what is the effort the third house lord in your chart the state of mind is governed by the moon and the fifth house lord very important especially education higher education we see the pancham adipati how he is and even for the power of knowledge or comprehension understanding also pancham adipati is very important uh, so you know those aspects were all looked into and we gave a lot of boost and strength to our planets we say pushti okay so we gave her a lot of pushti through the planetary aspects and then you won't believe it she uh, started going to college and she's got fantastic marks and it's not about see it's no i don't believe in marks marks and academics and score alone but i'm just saying from a state of i will not attend college and i will make any excuse to avoid it even if it means my parents have to spend 15000 on an mri scan i will let them do it i will make them run around go to uh, one go from hop from one doctor to another i will not tell them i am pretending to be ill but i will make sure that i continue to pretend to be ill that mode she was in she was continuously posing as if she was ill but finally when the negative energy was cleared some amount of delusion and in negative influence of that drishti was removed so automatically you know she got some clarity and she probably realized that yeah okay uh, this is not the way to deal with this i can talk to them and tell them that i'm not interested in studying this particular stream so that's when she opened out and she shared because many times when negative energy envelops you na so it it really seals your tongue meaning you can't talk you can't express you can't be free so you won't even realize what you're doing so you are already delusional and then when others also put pressure it adds to that so it adds to the pressure it adds to stress and strain so this is what happened to that girl but once the negative energy was cleared she was actually fine and uh, she opened out and she told them uh, that this is what is happening and we had to do a lot of strengthening of planets through japas and certain prayers which uh, the parents very willingly agreed to do and once that was done uh, with time she was able to go back to her uh, college and she scored extremely well in her exams extremely well uh, first class i can say uh, and now she's in her second year pre university so it's like uh, and it's not like she's a dumb child she's a brilliant child it is just that the mind is so weak that it will make you uh, even go to the extent of playing tricks with the family to make sure you get what you want see that is another thing see when rahu and chandra are together such people also will be very ziddi very very adamant and they will say no matter what this is what i want and i will do anything to achieve it now that's not a good sign right it's not a good trait in the long run 
it's going to really affect your uh, way of the way you lead life so you can't always have everything you want somewhere somebody has to tell you that you know you can't always be thinking right for yourself so uh, that is where you know astrology consultation comes in very handy because you uh, you get to you get a very good uh, perspective because when we analyze we analyze without any prejudice we don't know you nothing just with the details of date time and place of birth we analyze your chart we tell you so many things about yourself uh, and then when you understand that okay all these are reflected through planets and their position you also gain some confidence to say yeah maybe i should strengthen my planet so that i'm out of this i also see a lot of uh, people in their mid 40s who are going through some kind of a career crisis and in this uh, phase of their life what happens is that they are in so much stress that they want to quit their job no matter what and i see that when they call me before quitting the job i can at least tell look at the chart and tell them whether it's the right decision to make because most of the times you are in that weak moment of quitting the job when you don't have a provision or good luck element to get a new job in the nearest future you might have to wait for a year or so to even get there and in that week one week moment if you actually put in your papers or give your resignation you might have to actually sit at home without a job for a year and i've seen this happen to so many people especially those who call me after quitting and say i've quit my job i don't know what to do please give me some direction that's when i say oh you should have called me before but of course not, nothing is in their hands right they are all influenced by karma and um, planetary positions and things like that so uh, that is also not going to help so basically when you do a consultation you will know when to quit when to hold on to how to be more forbearant and you know i understand that when you are in a state of uh, stress and depression it's not easy to hold on to the job you don't like to do now that is where that is where you have to through spiritual remedies gain lot of mental strength i have seen i have seen clients who have improved in their st- mental health leaps and bounds uh when they do the japas and especially for the moon when they do automatically they feel that calmness see this is all like uh, proven actually it's not that i'm just telling something just like that i have seen it work for people through years through uh, through my own experience through my own eyes i've seen them improve it requires a little bit of patience but of course if your moon is afflicted then obviously you will also lack patience uh so you know you'll have sometimes you may have mental lethargy but uh, most uh, most of the times you'll lack uh, patience and you'll have a lot of udvega bhavana meaning very uh, disturbed state of mind you know i want this i want that like this that always like um, jittery also and uh, confused all all these things happen this is very common so i can't say it's your fault or anything i mean your planet is such so you i can't expect much so basically uh, all these are the traits regarding mental health and connected to the moon how moon is connected to mental health and you know if moon is afflicted all these personality traits are very very common how do you deal with this now um there are a couple of options i'll first give you options that you can try on your own without having to um have an uh, astrologer intervene or a, a priest or a purohit intervene to do pujas for you one thing is do shiva shakti aradhana because shiva controls the moon devi also controls the moon so visiting a shiva temple every mondays and especially a shiva temple which also has devi shakti there so then you get shiva shakti both so also devi is kinetic energy so and shiva is static energy so somewhere they will also balance your state of mind to the extent that you know you have some equilibrium you understand what's happening in your life you know how to take decisions and things like that and uh, you could also do chant mantras uh, related to them or about them like a shiva mantra shiva panchakshari or devi related mantra whatever you know you know keep it as a regular practice that will also help you gaining uh, in gaining a lot of mental strength and shiva will basically calm your mind to the extent that uh, even if you are uh, somebody who's very aggressive who can't control anger who can just speak anything and upset the whole world 
all that you will gain gain that samyam or control and um, you will know when to talk how to talk how not to upset or offend others and things like that so this is one thing that you can do you could also visit the chandra temple uh, which is again in tamil nadu you know in tamil nadu uh, in the 60 kilometers radius all planets have their own individual temples all the navagrahas are all located in that kumbakonam region it also extends a little bit to pondicherry where the shani temple is there but uh, tingalur chandra temple is a very powerful temple if you go there it's like it's very simple in a very remote location not many people go there because it's as it is very difficult to access and go but if you have your own vehicle and you go there the moment you step into the temple you'll feel the calmness hitting you because it's the temple of the moon and moon really governs the mind so you know instantly you can feel a change whether you are a sensitive person or you are not sensitive the moment you go there you will understand the power of the place so that is a very nice uh, option for you for calming your mind and gaining some mental strength and stability okay and then you could also get the chandra japa done through us which is or any priest for that matter that's a very good option in a shiva temple apart from just visiting the temple you could get a rudrabhishek done frequently uh, once a month at least on a monday and if you have the uh, budget and willingness to do something on a bigger scale you could do a shatha rudrabhishek and it's a very powerful ritual it's like sarva papa prayashchitta parihara we say so it's like for all the sins we have committed uh, it's a, it's a, like a very good solution to wash off your sins and it's a very good solution to um, stop or end your suffering because of the sins you have committed in the past mm-hmm. life um, so that is also very very um, i can say proven uh, especially shatharu dravishaka is so good that i have seen like we have performed for clients uh, shatarudra abhisheka the the puja has been completed in 5 minutes i get phone calls of people saying now they are fine now the problem is resolved uh, and I, even people who are in coma and uh, you know who are in sedation and things like that they have also gained conscious the consciousness and they have also bounced back to good health but the thing is the beauty of shatarudra abhishek is that you know you should participate in it because the way it is rendered or chanted it's a vedic chant it's it's beautiful it's like it it will just transport you to another world and just absorbing those vibrations itself will give you a lot of strength but not always it's possible for everybody to participate and not everywhere you have qualified priests who do it in the right way so that's when you can uh, engage um you know through online or through known known resources get it done in your name and star and gotra when you know when you do it with this these three aspects definitely the punya or the power or grace will reach you i'm sure about that and most importantly i feel you should go for a consultation simply because know the root cause of the problem like i said about the girl if it's not just uh, you know if it's just about something that she doesn't like doing and she made her parents struggle so hard to even get to that point then what's the point instead you know you know instead of you know in fact before coming to me they had gone to many places didn't done remedies on their own but they forgot to consult after they consulted me i told them what exactly needs to be done to get out of it and then that's where in a very systematic way they were able to approach the problem and get a solution that is very important it's not like uh, because you know that uh, this shop sells this and that shop sells another thing you can't just keep going buying things it's not like you can go to a drug store and keep buying medicines without a prescription and you know you may not be actually zooming into the problem at all you may be treating it based on symptoms but it may not be the root cause for the problem which is reflecting like that girl like i said her main problem was not even uh, anything to do with headache it was basically to do with the academics the stream of education she chose so that is i mean why am i sharing all this is because you will understand better with a practical problem and i know people who have resigned their jobs because of mental stress and and they have contacted me after resigning and it has been so difficult even with remedies for them to get a job even with remedies they have tried per, like persistently tried and still not got a job so now 
that is all like you know because we say like vritti is also a devate we say ya devi sarva bhuteshu vritti rupena samsthita namastasye 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 namo namaha so devi is lakshmi she is your profession so no matter how they treat you at work how much stress you go through you can't be cursing your job you can't be saying i mean i hate this job i don't have job satisfaction and things like that there is a way of dealing with it now that is something that requires a little bit of sanskar and patience and uh, something to soothe in you like you know remedies what happens is with these remedies you, you automatically become calm and have it has a soothing effect on your mind so then you are able to think with clarity then there is no confusion otherwise like, like like i mentioned if rahu and chandra are positioned together lot of confusion today you want to do this tomorrow you will have a different state of mind you will want to do something totally different so it's like that so those are the things and uh, apart from that uh, propitiating the moon is also good for those who are in the industry of food milk dairy milk products uh, anything to do with liquids uh, water uh all of this to some extent uh, farming also to some extent uh, not fully uh, because buddha also governs farming so um all those people also can do this because if they are into food industry hotel industry and all that then uh, propitiating the moon uh, through shiva shakti or through the chandra japa itself really will help them boost uh, in their stream of uh, business in that field especially in the food field or food industry and hotel industry so uh, for everybody the chart is very different from another person what is food for me cannot need not be food for you so you have to take up a consultation a personalized consultation get your chart analyzed understand what's happening in your life in your mind whether your mind is guiding you right or your it's more of a misguiding factor and then strengthen yourself in such a way that you are empowered to take your own decisions to take the right decisions to do the right things and most importantly to enjoy life get out of depression get out of stress accept things as they are and you know with a smile that's very important so this is what i wanted to convey in this video uh, i hope you've got enough inputs to understand where you stand and what you need to do thank you so much Namaste.